Let's take a look at what happens when a graded potential is generated and how it then spreads in the form of what we sometimes call a local current or even a capacitance current or even, now that I think about it, a longitudinal current longitudinal current. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so what you're looking at here on the screen, this diagram with, again, all these <clears throat> blue boxes, which we might, you might recall from the previous picture, um, represents our chemical gated ion channels. Let's assume that we're looking at a section of a dendrite, a dendrite <clears throat> of a postsynaptic neuron. And here at the top of our drawing you see that neurotransmitters are diffusing across the synaptic cleft and a couple of them are binding. So right here is our synaptic cleft, and you need to assume that these neurotransmitters are being released by means of exocytosis um, by a presynaptic neuron. Now, I wish I hadn't quite shown you the binding of the neurotransmitter yet, but at rest, when this whole dendrite or when the whole postsynaptic neuron was still at rest, remember, the inside of the cell is always going to show a more negative charge compared to the outside of the cell. That's not to say the following. Let's clarify this one more time. What this doesn't mean is that on the inside of a cell there are only negative ions and on the outside of a cell there are only positive ions. That is not at all the case. We have, as a matter of fact, if we look at all the ions on the inside of a cell, there are plenty of positive and negative ions. And if we look at all the cells on the outside of a cell, there are plenty of positive and negative ions. It's just that the distribution of all of those ions is such that if we compare the inside with the outside charges, the inside at rest tends to be more negative. <clears throat> so this is what things look like at rest. However, now we're going to see that our neurotransmitter is binding to some of the chemical, chemically gated ion channels, its receptors, and as you know, that's going to result in the influx of, and I'll just use purple here, the influx of sodium ions primarily into our postsynaptic neuron. Is some potassium flowing outward? Is there an efflux of potassium? Sure, but at a much, this is occurring at a much slower pace than um, the influx of sodium. So much more sodium runs, runs into the cell than out of the cell. And what happens as a consequence is that we're going to start depolarizing this section right here where the sodium is rushing into the cell and the potassium is flowing outward. So we refer to this first section now as being depolarized as a result of the binding of the neurotransmitters, which in their turn opened up the chemically gated ion channels such that primarily positive ions such as sodium are beginning to rush in. Allow me to stop here for just a second and title this as an example of a depolarizing graded potential.
graded potentials can also hyperpolarize, but our example is going to be that of a depolarizing graded potential. Let's come back to where we were. So at this point in time, as all of the sodium is flowing inwards and some potassium is flowing outward, we're seeing that the first section of this particular dendrite is depolarizing. What happens as this is all happening is that these positively charged particles, ions, are going to start trading places on the inside with negatively charged particles that are located on the inside. So we have kind of a trading of places occurring. We also see the same thing happening on the outside. That is, on the outside we see that the negatively charged ions are going to trade places with the positively charged ions. And this is occurring in both directions. And as this occurs, little by little, we will see now that the next section, that is the next segment, segment number two is depolarizing, and simultaneously what happens to segment one is that it now goes back to rest, so it repolarizes. And this continues. So now the second segment's ions are going to trade places both on the inside and the outside. And this is occurring in both directions. And now we're going to see that yet the third segment is depolarizing. So that its inside becomes more negative, I'm sorry, more positive now compared to its uh, outside. And so on. And oh, of course at the same time segment number two in the meantime has become repolarized. Gotta make sure that I'm keeping track of what I'm doing here. It gets very very messy because it's a dynamic um, these are steps that occur all simultaneously. And eventually this moves on into segment four. This is how a graded potential travels away, spreads away from its point of origin. We would consider this to be the point of origin, the point of stimulation. So the point of origin is the stimulus site. That's where our neurotransmitter was binding. And M for neurotransmitter bound. We'll pick it up in, from here in the next video clip.